Let's go from this. To this. Stay tuned. What's going on, YouTube? This is the Adventure Strider. I want to welcome you back to the channel. This is your first time here on Welcome to the Channel. Hope that you'll enjoy the content that I have for you. Well, in today's video, we're actually going to be working on the headlights for the Africa Twin. It's one of those that I'm not sure why or what kind of laws or rules, regulations that Germany has. But when Honda developed the 93 model, and I even think some of the other years, they actually have it to where the motorcycle headlights only have one dim light even though it's a dual system um, it's one of those that the headlight plug I've kind of already investigated a little bit and it's got this slot for your additional dim light however and even the bulb has both filaments but for some reason there's a rule or regulation in Germany at the time that said that it, it wasn't going to have a secondary dim light so that's one thing I'm going to be doing, but I'm also going to be changing from incandescent bulbs to LED bulbs just so I can see a little better at night. So the first thing I want to do is show you what you need to do in order to get to where you can add the extra wire. All right, so in order to get access to your wires, as you can see, I've already kind of pulled this all apart, and I'll kind of tell you more about that when we get there. Um, that way I can know kind of what I needed to do. Um, but the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your side fairing off And if you'll remember you take your two bolts in the back that's hooked up to the gas tank right here Take these two off and then you're going to take your three bolts off of your Fairing right here on the front and then you got another bolt that is down Here right there So once you take those three off your side fairings will come off on both sides I just kind of already had that off but on the front fairing and windshield, you're gonna to need to take the top two bolts off up here. Take your two bolts right here. So on the back side, you got a bolt right here. And like I said, you got one on this side and then also one at the same spot on the other side. So one of the comments I had when I posted one of my previous videos over on Facebook is that these are not actually Phillips screws. They're called JIS. Uh, Japanese industry standard screws um, it looks a lot like a Phillips head but there is just a very slight difference um, and so I've kind of got some of those now so these are going to be those same JIS screws that I was talking about Now that we remove the front fairing, we have access to our headlight assembly. On each side of your headlight assembly, before we can take it apart, you've got some relays. And the bottom relay is going to be for your blinkers. And in order to take that off, all you do is just kind of pull it and it comes out of the holder. And then this is going to be your dim light relay. And so just kind of pull it up and it'll come off. And then on the other side, you have your brightness relay. So it's just the same as the dims. You're just going to pull it up and it comes off. The next thing we need to do is we actually need to unplug our actual headlights. In order to do that, all you do is just pull the plug off the headlight on both sides. I've already got the one on the other side unplugged because you saw I was best with it trying to figure out what I was doing. But also on this side, down here on the bottom, you have your little bulb that is connected to your just kind of running light. I guess that's what they call it. So in order to do that, you just pull it out. With our relays removed and our headlights unplugged, we can now remove the two bolts that are holding our headlight assembly in. In order to do that, you're going to need to remove the two 10 millimeter bolts. One of them's over up here on this side. 
and then in the same location here on this other side. In order to remove your headlight assembly, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pull it up and then at the very bottom, hopefully you can see it and I can zoom into it, but at the very bottom you have two little feet that are going straight down that's holding onto this bottom bracket. So by pulling it up, it pulls it out of this bracket and then pull it back down and that's removing it. All right, now that we have access to all of our wiring, um, from the factory, all of this is actually taped up. Um, I had removed all of the, the tape on it so that I can kind of understand what is going on back here before I made this video. But your blue wires right here are actually gonna be your bright lights that are going to, like I said, your bright relay on this side. Um, your white wire right here is actually for your dim lights and then your wires right here, like I said, is going to be for your blinkers. The green wire is going to be your ground. So to get the rubber boot off of your plug right here, we're going to need to just peel it back and kind of like you would any kind of rubber grommet on a plug. And that'll actually get you access to it kind of like it is on this side right here. All right, and that's what I was talking about. You got two wires right here on your brightness. One of them is actually coming up here to your brightness indicator on your gauges. So the plan of attack in order to get my extra wire I need for the dim light to work on this side is actually going to be to do kind of like they did the brightness wires. And the, what they did was they split it right here. And so on this side over here, I've got some white wire just so it kind of color matches with what the manual says and what come from factory. I'm actually going to cut this wire and I'm going to attempt to solder these actually together. Um, you don't necessarily have to solder them. I don't know how good my solder job is going to be so I may end up putting a butt splice in here. But you can actually use a butt splice to run your extra wire to your other plug. Just for reference so that you may need to know in case you want to take one of these out of the plug, um, this is the new one that I'm going to actually be using. Um, right there on the end, maybe you can see it, how there's like a little tab that's sticking up. What that does, is that's what actually holds it into the actual plug. Now that you saw the ear that I was talking about, if it's actually in the plug itself, you're going to want to push down on that little ear because it on this side over here hopefully you can see where it's actually got a little lip right there that little lip with that ear is what holds it into the plug all right so i'm not going to really show you up close my soldering job because i don't solder for a living or anything like that so it's not very good but i did check and make sure that i had you know 12 volts when i was on loading them so i do have good voltage and good current but it's just not very good soldering job but hey if it ever messes up i just go in and you know put a butt splice in there and then be done with it you know so but i got some white tape in order to tape it back up kind of matching like i said on the brightness where they put blue tape i'm going to use white tape on this side all right so now let's route our white wire for our dim lights to the other side like the other wires are And then in order to actually insert the white wire back into the, or into on the other side, your clip, all you do is put, put it into the actual top of your connector and make sure that your ear that I was talking about is actually facing the inside of your connector. Once you have it in there, just push it down on in there until you hear a click. And we're going to do the same thing on this other side. So before you put them in the actual connector, make sure that you run it through the actual boot 
like I didn't do on the first time. All right, now that I got that boot on, let's do the same thing on this side, but I gotta get that put back in the boot too. back in the boot and everything um, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna tape it all back up kind of like it is factory so I'm gonna use some black tape and go from probably about I don't know about right there all the way around to about right there now that I have the actual plugs taped back up I need to actually go ahead and retape my relays wires back up um, you don't have to take loose the relay wires like I did as far as the tape um, I was just taking all this loose so I can kind of understand what was going on here and what I actually needed to do to get my other headlight to have the low beam. So before we go any further, I meant to say that I got the actual H4 plugs and terminals uh, from a place called Revival Cycles. Um, it seemed like that was one of the very few places that actually sold the H4 terminals that I could find. Um, I was kind of Pleased with their service and everything else. Um, I'm not affiliated with them at all, but they also included uh, ceramic plugs to go instead of the ones that I have. And in the future, I may change it out to these ceramic harder type plugs because they're a little more resistant to the heat. So the LED headlights that I decided to go with is this Onyx Toe from Top Kit Lighting off of Amazon. I went to the actual local parts houses and they all had the same Savannah brand. However, whenever I was looking at them and even looking on the website, it acted like it was a single beam and only had a single lumen. Where this one right here is designed for motorcycles. It's also fanless and it had two separate beams with separate lumens. I'm going to put those lumens right up here so that you can see how bright they are. So before we actually put our headlight assembly back on, let's go ahead and put our LED headlights in here. That way we have easy access to get them in and out. In order to do that, you're going to want to pull these rubber covers off the back of them. And then on the side right here, you got a little clip and all you do is just kind of push it in and pull up. And it just unlatches just like that. And so let's pull them out. And then let's do the same thing on this other side. Alright, so here's the actual LED headlight that I bought, like I said. Um, and you'll see that the ears are kind of keyed a certain way to where this one right here is bigger than the two on the bottom. And it's the same way on your actual headlight assembly where you got a big one right there and two small ones down here. So let's put it back in and then let's lock it back down. Just like that. So it's keyed again, like what I was talking about on this side, it's keyed right here. And you got your two small ones down here on the bottom with your big one on top. And then let's latch it back down on this side too. All right, now that we have our LED headlights in here, let's go ahead and put our rubber covers back on. And you'll notice that you have a top on the top side. And then you got this down here to kind of help, I guess, let some of the water or stuff that may get trapped in here, let it fall out. All right, now that we've got our headlights in here and we got our rubbers back on, Let's go ahead and put the headlight assembly back on the bike. So if you'll remember when we took it off, we're going to want to put our headlight assembly in and kind of go above where it mounts to the screws right here so that our feet clear and it goes into the bracket down here on the bottom.
just like that. And then you got your screw that goes on this side right here. And the same one on this side. All right, now that we got our headlight assembly uh, attached back on the bike, we can plug our headlights back in. And the same thing on this side over here. Now that we got this headlight back on, let's put our relays back on the two mounts right here with our blinker down here on the bottom and our low beam up here on top. So don't forget about your running light that goes down here on the bottom of your headlight assembly. And then put your high beam relay back on the mount right here. All right, let's put our front fairing back on. Make sure you line it up with your two holes right here. And then make sure you put your two up here on the very top. And then don't forget about your bolts on the very bottom back here in the back. Time for the moment of truth. So we got both of our headlights like I was trying to do on the low beam. And then there's the high beam. So as I just said, I think it turned out really well. Um, it's one of those that wasn't very hard. Um, as you could see, adding that second wire so that you have your dual high beam and low beams also wasn't very hard. I'm not gonna say because the solder job that I did wasn't very good that in the future I may have to butt splice it, but I think it's going to hold up for a little while at least. Um, I'm not really sure why Germany decided that this didn't need to have the dual low beams. Um, maybe one of y'all can uh, let me know in the comments below. So, But really, that's all I got for you. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe below. And let me comment. Let me know if you think these LED headlights look good, if you think that they are actually going to work out for me. Um, I know I've seen some people that on the forums and stuff like that kind of wasn't really recommending going to LEDs, but by changing from the 55 to 60 watt halogens to these, I think, 13 and a half halog uh, LEDs, I'm saving wattage, so I'm not going to be pulling as many amps on the front headlights as I was. So, that's a win-win all over. Um, and share this to some of your friends. Share this to some people, you know, that may have a German model Africa Twin that may want to do dual headlights, like I said. So until the next video, always take the center route, and I'll see y'all then.